Today's social media segment is brought to you by South Louisiana Bank. It's better when we bank together. Weights and Downer, attorneys at law. Terrebonne Ford, built Ford Tough. Gen Gators Power Systems is the area's leading Kohler standby generator solution, specializing in maintenance, repair, and installation on all major brands, from gas to diesel and 2KW to 2000. Home or commercial, our team has you covered. Our factory certified technicians and installers are highly trained to provide response and repair when you need it the most. We service what we sell, period. Trust the Gen Gators where we sink our teeth in the service. Everybody, welcome back to Body Time. Harry McCullough here. Uh, we thought we'd check in, uh, not locally, but up in Washington, D.C., where Garrett Gray is a congressman uh, from the 6th District has joined us for a couple of segments. And first of all, Garrett, thanks so much for joining us. You just flew back uh, into Washington, D.C., uh, but always involved in, in a lot of the things that happen around our area, for sure. Uh, last week was the big infrastructure week, and you're on the Infrastructure and Transportation Committee. Uh, can you fill us in about what's going on there? Yeah, uh, so Harry, great to be back with you. And uh, last week was was another major um, step forward in uh, infrastructure. What we did last week is we passed the Federal Aviation Administration uh, authorization bill, which has everything from uh, these national and international level wins for passengers and improving the passenger experience, giving consumers more rights uh, whenever they're flying on airlines, trying to use better technology to predict when flights will be late, when flights will be early, communicating that, sharing it with consumers, and trying to just improve the efficiency of that overall experience. But it also had things that come all the way down to Houma, Louisiana, <laughs> where it works to help to provide a research facility and um, a test bed for new advanced aviation. As you know, the Houma Airport is one of the busiest airports in the country in regard to helicopter flights and passengers going to the offshore. And so this is a great laboratory to test out new technology, um, advanced air mobility systems, all of these brand new Jetsons-like uh, technologies yeah. to fly passengers into the offshore and other places. And so we've, we've authorized more work there. And of course, that's building upon the $5 million that we announced uh, a month or so ago uh, to invest in that airport. And so really just everything from these macro level issues, <laughs> like helping out passengers around uh, the United States to these issues right at home and helping to improve uh, home airport and improving its use as a research facility. Yeah, look, uh, helicopters are, are, well, have been in the news a little bit in Azerbaijan uh, recently, but, but uh, very important. And, and when you can get almost drones taking people out there, uh, it, it, we, we've, we've had a couple of segments on that. Very uh, exciting ways, uh, the future that, that's coming for sure. Uh, flood projects are all, always something that, that is always big. And that's, again, in, in with a lot of the committees you're dealing with. And every time we have a guest on here, they go, we want to thank Gary Gray's. He's helped us out. Uh, what about Southeast Louisiana and some of those projects we can look forward to? Yeah, yeah, sure. And, and Harry, if I can just quickly, uh, quickly go back. One sure. other uh, big structure win is we also passed the Coast Guard authorization bill uh, out of the House last week, and that legislation authorizes new fast response cutters for the United States Coast Guard that are built uh, right in the Bayou region at the Lockport Bollinger facility, employing hundreds and hundreds of workers at that facility and helping out the economy. In regard to flood protection, um, we, uh, we recently got some additional wins. In fact, um, nearly $30 million in additional federal funds will be invested in the Morganza to the Gulf Hurricane Protection Project for Terrebonne and Lafourche Parishes. When you go through and add up all that money, Harry, between the, the, the tax, um, um, uh, sales taxes, the property taxes, and all of the federal and other funds that we've pulled together. This is going to be over a billion dollars in the ground in uh, Terrebonne and Lafourche 
Parish is huge, huge win, and even funds to begin the, some of the dredging activities that are required for the Homa Navigation Canal for a deepening, uh, deepening that canal. So a lot of local wins for the Bayou region. Yeah. So uh, Water Resource Development Act is that also um, that's marked up in early uh, early June. Early June, yeah. So that is the legislation that authorizes or sets all the laws and policies for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Uh, I know that everyone's got a frustration in dealing with the Corps of Engineers, whether it's a wetlands permit or the long delays on the Morganza project. So this gives us an opportunity to help improve the efficiency, to help streamline the process, even to make some small project tweaks and one of the things we're gonna be working on in addition to advancing Morganza to the Gulf Hurricane Protection is some additional improvements to how the La Rose to Gold Meadow Hurricane Protection System is treated and how it's rated for insurance and things along those lines. So a lot of local improvements that we're eyeing to advance in uh, in that bill that we'll be working on in coming weeks yeah um yeah well insurance is, is probably the number one thing obviously you know flooding levees that kind of stuff got to be the number one issue around here and i'll just give you a personal note i went from not being in a flood zone to the new risk rating 2.0 eight thousand dollars a year for flood insurance uh, where i live oh. never flooded oh. in, in any of that so anyway that's what the people of terrible parish are dealing with uh here living here so th that that's a big issue and i'm sure that i don't think that's part of you know, that's FEMA. I guess that would be FEMA, which would be part of your purview. But do we know where we're standing as far as the lawsuit that the Louisianians had filed against FEMA and the risk rating 2.0? Yeah, Harry, so look, there are a number of things going on. Number one, there is a lawsuit that, uh, that's that been filed uh, by the state of Louisiana. We have been encouraging them to do that for, for years, and I'm glad they finally have advanced that. Number two, um, we're leading federal legislation trying to pull back on risk rating 2.0. Uh, we think that the fact that they're refusing to provide any transparency on the funding, uh, excuse me, a, a transparency on the methodology for how they calculate rates is entirely inappropriate. It, it, it disproportionately affects Louisiana said another way it really discriminates against our state mm -hmm. the third thing is we have secured literally billions of dollars in new funds for resilience that means restoring the coast it means flood control and of course hurricane protection the the, the better levies the better protection system we have the lower the rates will be wise which is why it's so important that we get these projects moving forward um, and then lastly we believe that fema uh, violated a a rule in the way that they uh implemented this risk rating 2.0 and that Congress never did anything. They did all of this on their own without any approval or oversight or permission from Congress. We believe that they violated a rule there and we're taking a, a really a fourth track where we're trying to stop them from implementing it as a result of their violation there. Yeah, we, we certainly appreciate the help if you can get it. Uh, I've been in TV for a while, so I'm going to tease right now. I'm going to come back and ask you where you're going to run for office next year. Uh, we're going to do the tease part, so we'll take a break. We'll be right back with Representative Gary Graves right here on Bike Time. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Terrebonne General Health System. Your health is our legacy. Rouse's, you're either local or you're not. Buick, the craft of modern luxury. St. Martin and Bork, know your rights. Everybody, welcome back to Body Time. Harry McCulley here. We're spending some time with Garrett Graves. We have another uh, segment to go. And I, I just teased that uh, we were all worried about where he was going to run for office and he was going to tell us. You're not going to tell us. You haven't decided yet, right? Uh, but but you're, you're still looking at things as they made the, those maps uh, last time by, from the judge. Huh? We, we are. And, and look, last week, the Supreme Court, or not the Supreme Court, I guess one judge in the Supreme Court, Louisiana, and that uh, they effectively said that the map that the legislature drew in um, in January is going to temporarily be in place for the 2024 elections. And, you know, Harry, just to remind you, the majority of legislators in the Bayou region voted against that map, recognizing it wasn't good for the Bayou region. What we're doing right now as a result of this new curveball is looking at the new map, uh, looking at the six districts that they drew that is, is the most ridiculous map I've ever seen uh, for the state of Louisiana, trying to figure out where it makes the most sense uh, to run, where we can be most effective. And as you know, 
Uh, number one, the Bayou region is such an important region uh, for the for the entire state of Louisiana. We've got to continue making progress on the restoration of our coast and the protection of our communities and building better uh, interstate systems. We've got to get that Highway 90 upgraded to, to I-49 to full interstate standards. And we've got to get a north-south corridor connecting the uh, home of Thibodeau region up to I-10. Um, if, if I'm reelected to Congress next year, uh, I'll have an opportunity to chair the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, which would mean that we would be in charge of writing legislation like a new highway bill, a uh, bill that governs how we handle roads, bridges, where we are funding goes, how we prioritize uh, projects. And in fact, some of our work is witnessed in what you're seeing right now with the upgrade to LA-1 between Leeville um, on up to uh, the Golden Meadow area. We had written language that prioritized that project in, uh, in a grant program. And so we have the opportunity to really advance some other local and national priorities. Um, it also has jurisdiction over the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, over FEMA and disasters, over ports and waterways, and this, uh, over pipelines. This could be an amazing opportunity for Louisiana. So we're looking carefully at all of the districts and trying to make the, the best decision for the state. Yeah, in, in line for that chairmanship, uh, it, it'd be a good time uh, so what goes into you deciding which district that you're going to run for? Well, look, it, it, it comes down to, I think, where we can be most effective. That's really what this is about. It shouldn't be about uh, these districts shouldn't be about an individual person. Um, I think thinking about where we can be most effective for the citizens, for the voters. Um, uh, as I, I mentioned, I've got a long history in, uh, in the Bayou region and, and in South Louisiana. Love that part of the state. I uh, just want to make sure that we're looking at the, at the makeup of the districts, the parishes that are involved, the background that we have and the knowledge of the state that we have. And, and, and I'll just say it one more time, Harry. I think what's most important is where we can be most effective for Louisiana. Right. So in two years, do you see these maps being different? Uh, I, I know it all came from, I guess, Alabama was the first. And it, and, and here, it, it, I guess, is the Voting Right Act that that we have a majority of 30 percent African-American black uh, folks. So that's why they have to have two district of majority black, not just minorities, but just black. So do you see it being differently two years from now or that, that maybe the court system, uh, another challenge will be here? I think there is a 100% chance that this map will be thrown out. Um, ultimately, let's keep in mind what the, the recent court decision said was it didn't say that this map was good, it was okay, it was legal or constitutional. What the court said was that we're too close to the election and we've got to have a map in place even if it's imperfect. So the, the court did not rule this of the United States did not rule on the validity, again, the legal uh, legality or the constitutionality of the map. In fact, the, the U.S. Appellate Court for the Fifth District threw the map out and this very map out and said that it was, in fact, illegal. You've got you've got competing uh, challenges to the map. There was one on the Voting Rights Act and there was one under equal protection. Um, uh, so one's a law, one's a constitutional amendment uh, competing with one another. So I'll just say it again, Harry. I am absolutely confident that this map will be thrown out. Unfortunately, it looks like it won't be thrown out until the 2026 election, which leaves a very flawed map in place for the 2024 elections, including splitting up the uh, Bayou region in a way that just doesn't make sense. Right, it really dilutes our strength as a, as a community here, uh, as one one little uh, community. Uh, yeah, it, we got a minute to go, uh, Congressman. And so the Voting Right Act, do you think that'll be challenged uh, from, from, I mean, so what happens if we get 15% Hispanics? Do we have to then have a, another, spot just for the, you know, group for them. I don't understand how that works going forward. Or do you, do you need a, a, a certain number of representatives that are Cajun and, and things along those lines? <laughs> and look, you're, you are correct that there is uh, over 30 percent of the state is um, is African-American. But it, it, it also is important to keep in mind that you've got to have groups that are that are all together because if, if you have folks that are that are spread all across the state and every third house has uh, black residents, that's really difficult to draw maps. So there are three things that you have to, that the law requires that you consider when drawing maps. One of them is compactness, making sure that you're not drawing a line or a snake through the state. 
just as this map does. Uh, number two is uh, what they call communities of interest, making sure that communities that have common interests are, are all together in the same congressional district. That allows for a member of Congress to focus on common priorities. And the last one, of course, is racial. And you can't intentionally gerrymander or cherry pick for racial outcomes, but you also can't intentionally dilute. So you can't what they call pack and you can't do what they call crack or dilute. And so those are the three things, compactness, communities of interest, and racial. And just to be clear, the court has not ruled that there needs to necessarily be a second minority district. Um, that all is going to be subject to court decisions um, in, in before the 2026 election. In fact, the last ruling of the court was that these maps are, in fact, illegal or unconstitutional. We'll be right back for more Body Time right after this. Today's social media segment is brought to you by Alford and Associates for all of your insurance needs. CIS, Cardiovascular Institute of the South, the highest quality cardiovascular care available. Barca Honda, the Barker family tradition of quality. 